It's been another busy weekend of championship football. Let's talk about it. Guys, welcome back to another video on the channel. As always, we've got absolutely loads of talking points to go through in today's video. We've got 11 games to go over. Obviously, we had the Brentford against Rotherham game postponed. But as always, do get your thoughts in the comments down below in terms of what you made of your team's performance. We also have a few games to preview and predict in the second half of today's video. So do get your score predictions for them in the comments down below. And also, do check out the Patreon. Link to that is down below. Loads of cool perks for you guys to check out over there. So do give it a look over there. And before we do jump into anything, let's take a look at the current standard of the Prediction League and it is Championship Pro who's starting to form a bit of a gap at the top of the table consolidating his place there doing very well at the moment. This is how League 1 is currently looking so we had a couple of people dropping out from the main Prediction League myself I currently find myself 10th in League 1 I've not having an all too bad game week to be honest with you but quite a few of you have uh, pipped me to that one and then this is how the League 2 Prediction League is currently looking so we've got a lot of people who are right on the verge of breaking that 100 point barrier so do get your score predictions in for the midweek games. But without any further ado guys let's jump into this one. And starting things out with Friday night's game it was a goalless draw in the end between Huddersfield and Cardiff. Now Cardiff we've seen them win matches so far this season with like less than 30% possession or something like that. This was just a question of them not quite being effective enough in possession and I think a lot of credit here has to be given to Huddersfield because one of the real criticisms that we've had of Huddersfield throughout the season so far is defensively they keep making these basic errors whether it be them playing out from the back and gifting up possession to too easily or it's committing fouls in silly places and stuff like that. All those mistakes were pretty much cut out in this one. I thought that Naby Sar and Richie Keo did really well to limit one of the most informed strikers in the league at the moment in Kiefer Moore. And to be honest with you, Huddersfield will probably see this game now as a bit of an opportunity missed to not pick up all three points. Obviously the big thing that everyone will point towards will be the penalty in the end. Sonogo steps up on his debut and puts it wide. Dylan Phillips, who does have a very good record of facing penalties, did obviously go the right way but didn't need to do anything for it in the end. Cardiff never really got going for this one but I think that a lot of credit and a bit more hope will be given to Huddersfield fans after that performance, knowing that they can work on that defensive platform. Next up we go to Vicarage Road. We had Watford up against Forest as the early kickoff, and this game pretty much went the way that we thought it would. I predicted a 1-0 for Watford in the end. In the first half, the home side very much in the ascendancy for this one. Down that right-hand side for Watford, Saar was causing problems, and him up against Gate and Bong, I think was always going to result in a little bit of a mismatch, really, wasn't it? Bong gets done by Saar for the first first goal, Samba sort of pushes the ball out to Messina on the edge of the box, who's unmarked and he just smashes it in past them to make it 1-0. Now, Watford may be a little bit uh, risky. We've seen this go against them a few times this season when they decide to just like sit on the league and not go for the kill in the second half, but ultimately we have to give credit where it works out, you know. Defensively, they were sound for that second half. Forrest did press a little bit more, got into a few more dangerous areas, but ultimately that little bit of extra quality just wasn't quite there. Lyle Taylor did have the ball in the back in there towards the end of the game but that one was ruled out for offside so yeah Watford doing the business at the moment obviously Swansea and Brentford have games in hand on them but they have the points on the board they're currently second in the championship and ultimately these last two games have been a decent reaction from that loss against Bournemouth. Next up we then had Barnsley beating Birmingham by one goal still and continuing this unbelievable run of form at the moment which has seen them climb into the top six now this by no means was the prettiest game of football to watch over the weekend I think that Birmingham obviously came into this one with a game plan of limiting Barnsley's press and effectiveness in midfield by just hitting things long really, you know, Birmingham had a couple of chances here and there from set pieces, like a couple of them fell to Harley Dean, but realistically, their attacking intent was next to nothing for this game. I think they actually had the lowest expected goals, Birmingham, this weekend out of any championship side. Barnsley's goal in the end comes from a little bit of invention in the second half. Fast counter-attack, and this is where Barnsley can be absolutely devastating. We've seen a few examples of these fast moves from them recently, and DK with the strike, it was an absolute Thunderbolt, wasn't it? Rifles it into the top corner. The celebration was a little bit questionable, but those extra added bits of quality there could make all the difference for Barnsley this season. Huge win there, all things considered. Birmingham looked like they came happy to settle for the point really and when they did go behind they never really had that sort of reaction and foresight to get back into the game. Next up then to Ashton Gate and in many ways normality has resumed for Bristol City here. Two defeats on the spin, a couple more injuries in this game as well with two players having to go off with concussion in the first half but take nothing away from QPR in this game. They were fully worth the three points in this one. I thought they got their game plan absolutely spot on and they themselves have been going through a little bit of a rough patch recently so to pick themselves up in the manner in which they did in this game 
was a real testament to them. I mean, the ball in from Tog Kane for the first goal is absolutely outrageous. Unbelievable quality from that right-hand side. He's such a hit-and-miss player, I feel like, when it comes to those deliveries. But this time, got it spot on into Che, who makes it one for QPR. Dickey makes it two after quite an inventive uh, short corner was taken. But in terms of QPR, I really like the look of their midfield at the moment. I think that Phil and Johansson work really well for each other. Johansson especially, he's just got this real class about him. He's a player with real pedigree, dictates things in midfield for QPR, gets them moving going forward, and also gets involved with the defensive work as well. Dickey was a real stand-up performer as well, like he has been throughout the whole season. And for Bristol City, I think the changes in the injuries that were enforced in the first half maybe killed their flow of getting back into it, really. Naki Wells did miss a very good chance, but apart from that, I don't think there'll be any complaints from this one, really. QPR were just the better side. Next up then, let's head to Coventry as they throw off Dolby by one goal, still an absolutely massive result near the foot of the table. Now, Coventry were coming into this one not exactly on the most sparkling form and we sort of mentioned about them and their lack of goals in their last six or so matches. This was always going to be a game which was decided on the mistake here or there and in the end Derby gifted Coventry the opening goal for this one but I actually think that Coventry deserve quite a bit of credit for this one because they almost forced that mistake out of Derby the way that their midfield was set up to actually limit Derby's play moving forward. Nathan Byrne, who I've been quite a big fan of throughout the season so far, is sort of forced to go sideways, that's intercepted, and then Biamu's in on goal and makes it 1-0 to Coventry. And from that point onwards, Derby were always going to find it tough, especially with this record, which is still so poor from Derby, of getting back into matches when they fall behind. Obviously, the only real anomaly of that so far this season has been the Forest game. Derby tried to shift their shape a little bit going into that second half, but ultimately, Coventry held on to this one. And I've got to say, looking at Coventry's next few fixtures, they've got a decent run and a real opportunity here to really put some breathing space between themselves and the bottom three. Now, these three points will go a long way, but I honestly think over the next four or so games or something like that, they really could take themselves out of the picture for relegation, which would be absolutely massive for them. Derby, still very much in it with that defeat there. Next up then to the Den and to a result, which I really didn't see coming. Blackburn 2, Millwall 0. I've given a lot of stick to Tony Mowbray recently, and I still hold the opinion that Blackburn have underachieved so far this season, given the quality that they have there in that squad. But when he gets things right, it's only right to give him the applause that's I thought he got it spot on for this game. Playing Tyree Stolen down the middle caused all sorts of problems for Millwall all afternoon. Obviously, he had his real involvement in the second goal, which was put away by Gallagher. But all around, just a lot more fluid from Blackburn. They're attacking play more of what we expect from them uh, to see this season, really. The first goal, Dak took brilliantly, had George Evans spinning all sorts of ways for the first goal and took it really well. And Blackburn have been a bit of a streaky side so far this season where they'll go on, you know, a winning run followed by a quite extended losing run. Maybe this will be the start of things for Blackburn moving forward now going into this last part of the season. Millwall never really got going route, tried to change things around in the second half, but ultimately to no avail in the end. Millwall and Blackburn now both look sort of destined for mid-table finishes now, don't they? Next up then to Cow Road, we had Norwich beating Luton by three goals nil, and Norwich at this point in time just look on a completely different level, don't they? They very much do look like a Premier League side who's playing their football briefly in the Championship because they've been blowing teams out of the water recently, and it's not just the results, but it's the performances which are going along with it now. Each of their players are so comfortable on the ball. Everyone wants to take on that responsibility. The first goal was a real testament to that absolutely lovely build-up play down that left-hand side. A wonderful finish from Timu Puki in the end. He finishes the second one really well. Luton did have a decent chance to take the lead by the way from James Collins but he could only hit the post and from that point onwards Norwich just went into completely dominating the forward areas. Cantwell's goal was absolutely terrifically taken. He had a part to play in the first half as well and that forward three of Cantwell, Puki and Buendia is just so ruthless and imaginative with the chances they create. With the sort of core group of players that Norwich have got, it's very much a squad which has been together now for the past sort of like two to three years, isn't it? And you can really see those relationships on the pitch now between everyone. Everyone's got an understanding of each other and where they're going to be on the pitch, their strengths and weaknesses, and they just play to that so effectively every week now. It was a wonderful 90 minutes. Next up then to Deepdale Preston up against Bournemouth in what was very much a game of two halves here for the First off, it was the away side who was in the ascendancy. Preston, I mean, we barely got into their box for this half, you know, and their quality really showed. Dan Juma was fantastic. Solanke obviously linking up with Dan Juma for the goal in the end. It was John's story being a little bit weak for that one. I think that his inexperience probably told there, and Dan Juma finished well. But apart from that, Bournemouth could have been 2 3 up at half time if it was, wasn't for Everson, who once again was absolutely fantastic. Kelly had one chance where he got down to his near post to save really well. And just overall, you could see that. 
that Bournemouth in those attacking areas have just immense quality in their squad and this should be a team, I still hold the opinion, that should have no worries at all of getting into the top six but in the second half there was just such a drop off from the away side, I couldn't quite believe it, I thought that if they did carry on going for that kill the pressure would have told eventually but Preston in fairness to us, I thought we came out really well for that second half, much more battling performance. In the end, the goal comes from Steve Cook giving the ball away quite cheaply. DJ manages to nip in ahead of Ben Pearson, and this is where DJ is at his best, really. Running at defenders, having that quality, shifts the ball onto his left foot and finishes it brilliantly into the far post past Begovic. And if it was going to be any side that was going to go on and win this game, it was going to be North End. You know, we were the team on the top going into those final stages. Ben Whiteman had a chance, which was just tipped over the bar by Begovic. And so all things considered a decent point for North End in the end and we could have even gone on to win it. Bournemouth though you can't help but feel like that was a massive opportunity missed there given that they could have killed this one off after 45 minutes. And after that we had Reading beating Sheffield Wednesday by three goals still another really damning result in Wednesday season. The game changer moment obviously coming up for the red card for Borna. He cheaply gives the ball away initially to Poscas tries to rectify it by getting back into position but obviously just ends up bundling him over. Elise then gets the penalty Borna gets the red card and from that point onwards it was always going to be sort of curtain for Sheffield Wednesday really wasn't it you actually look at Sheffield Wednesday's upcoming fixtures as well and you struggle to see where the next points are going to come from to be honest with you I mean next up they got Norwich at Hillsborough which I mean it would be typical of the championship if Wednesday were to win that one but four out of Wednesday's next five matches are up against championship sides who are currently in the top eight I think ultimately for the rest of this game Reading had it quite easily really obviously it was obvious that Lucas Jow was obviously going to get on the score sheet against his former side Nandi Yadon finish well to make it three for Reading what I do like about Reading now though is they can be a little bit more adaptable with their system with the reintroduction of George Puskas obviously they've gone two up top now for their last couple of matches I think it's worked out really well I think that Jiao and Puskas could actually form a really decent partnership between themselves obviously for the vast majority of the season so far we've seen them go for that lone striker than the three behind but I think that Jiao and Puskas with maybe Elise in the hole behind that could be really effective. I think we've already seen some shades of that um, long term being a really nice partnership for Reading there. So yeah, a lot of positives and especially with the amount of momentum that some of the sides below Reading have at the moment to win this one in such comfortable fashion will obviously serve them well. Next up then to Stoke up against Wickham. It was Stoke walking away with all three points from this one in the end. They were plugging away for a lot of the first off but ultimately the difference came in the second half with two real moments of quality. It was a lovely give and go between Norrington Davis and Fletcher for the first goal and before that actually Wickham did have a decent chance themselves to take the lead for this sort of game the first goal you felt was going to be quite crucial really you know had Wickham got that um, they were really sat on that and frustrated Stoke from there on in but yeah those two real quick fire moments of quality made all the difference Norrington Davis with the first one and then Sutar with the second from the corner and after that it leaves Stoke in an interesting position where the top stick still seems like one stretch too far and at the moment what it's looking like Stoke will end up being along with maybe Middlesbrough is like sort of the best of the rest that aren't just capable of yet bridging that gap between themselves and the top six. At the moment, you feel like those two last playoff spots are sort of being fought out between Reading, Barnsley, Bournemouth and Cardiff, with Burr and Stoke just a couple moves behind those sides in terms of quality. For Wickham, a long way shift for Wednesday. I think it's a long way back from here. That's now three consecutive defeats. And that's our last game to go over. We've got Swansea up against Middlesbrough. We've definitely saved the most controversial till the end. Boy, where to start with this one? I think it's fair to say that at this point in time, over the last few matches, Swansea haven't quite been hitting the same levels that they were earlier on this season in terms of performance levels, but they are getting results. And we will get to some of the controversial decisions that went their way in this one. Now, obviously, AU gives Swansea the lead just before half-time. He's the big game player for Swansea, isn't he, you know? He may not be leading the championship this season in terms of, like, the most goals scored, but in terms of a player's importance to a side, AU's right up there for Swansea. They depend on him for these big moments. However, as we get into the second half, this is where the controversy starts to really unfold. The first big call made by the referee is to disallow the bowler goal scored, which would have ultimately gone on to level things up and make it 1-1. With still time for either Borough or Swansea to go on and win the game after that. Now, I think that this one can be a pretty unanimous decision, really. I think it's a really bad call by the referee, this one. For me, at least, and with that decision, I'm not like, oh, okay, I can see either way sort of thing a little 
little bit undecided. I think I'm 100% that should have stood as a goal. Obviously Middlesbrough eventually do get back into it and you know probably deservedly so Sam Morsi level things up late on to make it 1-1 and it looks as if this one's heading towards a draw until Swansea get given another last minute penalty and there's even more controversy surrounding this decision as of course originally the referee had given a corner. Now for me this one is a little bit more subjective than the disallowed goal was. I think that I'm, I'm pretty 100% on that one that should have stood. The penalty decision I, I can sort of see both ways to this one however the side that I am leaning to is I don't think it was a penalty to be honest with you I think that Savile does get to the ball first and obviously that's the determining factor for this one Bidwell then sort of kicks through him and ultimately Swansea are ordered the penalty A he goes on and scores and it's two pretty dubious decisions that have gone Swansea's way over the Leeds last couple of games, which have seen them pick up six points. Warnock after the game, I think rightly so, was pretty fuming. I want to get your guys' verdict on these two decisions in the comments down below. It'd be interesting to know. And if anyone does have a differing opinion to me as well, I'm happy to hear it. Come the end of the season, though, for both Borough and Swansea, those sort of decisions can make absolutely all the difference. Well, guys, there we have it. There were all the matches that did go on in the Championship over this weekend. As always, do get your thoughts in the comments down below in terms of what you made of your team's performance. In terms of what I thought was the goal of the weekend, I'm going to give this one to Daryl DK for that fantastic goal for Barnsley, which went on to win it against Birmingham. And for my result of the weekend, I think that long-term Coventry's win against Derby could be massive for their season. But as always, do get your thoughts in the comments down below. And so before we do wrap things up, let's now head into my midweek score predictions. So we've got three games that are going on in the championship in midweek we were supposed to have four but obviously Rotherham's game has now been called off so do leave these score predictions in the comments down below they all count towards the prediction league starting out at Ewood Park we got Blackburn going up against Swansea now Blackburn much more impressive over the weekend against Millwall I'm interested to see if they persist with Dolan down the middle I thought he worked quite well in that area and Swansea in terms of performance levels, still not quite hitting the same heights they were, but they are getting over the line in terms of results at the moment. And I think that this could be another similar sort of performance unless Blackburn do really get back to their best. I'm going to go 2 1 Swansea in that game, maybe with another last minute penalty or something like that. QPR up against Wickham. QPR, I think, are finding their flow. They had a bit of a wobble, but I think that that win um, over the weekend will serve them quite well. I think that the quality in that squad has gone up a whole lot with these loan additions that came in in January, and they probably get through this game. I'm going to go 2 0 QPR. And then last up, we got Barnsley going up against Derby. Can Barnsley continue this unbelievable win? streak. I think they might, you know, because Dolby, as of late, haven't quite been at it, have they? Once again, this is going to be another scenario where the first goal is going to be absolutely crucial to Dolby should Barnsley score early on. It really seems to sink Dolby at the moment and they're not really able to get back into these sort of games. I think it will be tight, but I think Barnsley just edge it. I'm going to go 1-0 to the home side, so do leave your guys' score predictions in the comments down below. But apart from that, guys, that will now wrap it up for today's video, so if you did go to enjoy it, make sure to leave a like. It is always massively appreciated. Get all your guys' thoughts and score predictions in the comments down below. Please check out all the links down below as well. Check out the Patreon if you've not already. Loads of cool perks over on there. Thanks so much to everyone that has signed up for that so far. But without any further ado, thanks for tuning in, guys, and I'll see you all in the next one.